Can I have your name and your title, please? Roberto Quijano, I'm the president of the uh, Citizens Council for Security in Baja California. You were talking with the media, local media about the results of the end of 2022. How's public safety in Baja California and Tijuana in particular? Well, according to our council, uh, unfortunately the numbers are really bad. I mean, the uh, overall uh, uh, delinquency or criminality grew about uh, between 11 and, and 7 percent for the last year. Uh, we are seeing the, a growth in some specific numbers like uh, uh, family violence, that's, that's terrible, uh, car uh, thefts is it's, it's increasing, and, and basically we are facing uh, uh, a miscoordination uh, uh, among all of our federal, state, and local authorities. In, in terms of homicide, homicide is one of the main issues in a city like Tijuana and unfortunately some of these cases have been reached or affected U.S. citizens and tourists in Tijuana and in, from the U.S. in Tijuana. How concerned are you about the homicide rate in Tijuana? Well, yes, we're really concerned about homicides in Tijuana, all Baja, but specifically in Tijuana. Nevertheless, uh, most of them, I, I, I can guess that 80, 85 percent are related to drug-related uh, uh, persons, okay. Uh, it, it has affected somehow uh, private citizens and, and sometimes tourists and, 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 and people visiting our, our, our state. Nevertheless, I can tell you 85 percent are related to, to drug traffickers and, 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 and people involved in, in criminal actions. Do you think that tourism and visitors are relatively safe still? In the, that has been the, the narrative for many years. Well, yes. I mean, like any other city in the world, specifically in Tijuana, you have to be very careful. There are some uh, neighbors in the city, some the outskirts of the city are not really that safe. But I mean, if what we have what uh, uh, we call uh, Zona Blindada, which is the zone where there's a, a lot of presence of, of, of police and, 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 uh, and uh, federal agents. So uh, overall, uh, Avenida Revolución and, and Zona Rio are pretty safety uh, sites in the city. So I strongly suggest uh, visitors to stay within that city, within that uh, region of, of the city. And if they are driving uh, a little south to, to Ensenada, Rosarito, uh, those uh, highways are, are pretty safe. I mean, we, we, we commonly don't face uh, uh, criminality in, in those areas. By now it's, it, it's common to see military personnel or not civilian guard uh, or La Guardia Civil in, 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 in the cities of Tijuana. Have they produced any good results? Well, uh, there, is a, there is a federal strategy and, and, the, and the reason why the federal government is here is basically to reduce homicides. And we've seen that the reduction uh, overall in the states, we have around 11% reduction in homicides in, in the state. Unfortunately, in Tijuana, we haven't seen that same result. Uh, nevertheless, the presence of the, uh, of the federal forces is really important uh, uh, in, 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 for our community. I mean, the, the perception is, is really important and the presence of, of, of these forces, especially the military, is, is really important for, for that. The federal Mexican government is trying to, is going what many label as militarization of public safety in many other areas of the public civic activity, public activities. Do you think it's, it's the militarization working in favor of the public? Well, the, according to our federal constitution, uh, all uh, matters related to security must be uh, coordinated and governed by civilians. Okay, so. Uh, not only that we disagree with the uh, militarization of the safety, of the public safety, but there's a legal issue here. I mean, the, 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 our constitution prohibits that. So, so no, we do not agree with the, uh, uh, the, uh, to get the, the military forces involved in security, especially in prevention measures in our cities. Now, uh, recently we have a story about uh, serial killer of women and, and mix in Tijuana and the suspicion that the guy it's an American citizen committing crimes here. Is this given more, I mean, what's your reaction to this new phenomenon, if it is a new phenomenon? Well, uh, fortunately in Mexico, especially in Baja, we don't have records of serial killers. That's, that's, that's something that we have not seen uh, at least in the last 40 years, okay? 
uh, unfortunately, we have another, another kind of violence. But when you talk about serial killers, uh, we haven't seen that, and, and, and we rely on our uh, 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 DA's office to, to make the proper investigations and, and see the profile of, uh, especially women who are the victims of these homicides. But this has been, the feminicides have been a big problem. How serious has that been? Very serious, very, very serious. We have the second largest number of, of, of women being killed uh, in, in, in all over Mexico. So yes, it's, very, it's a very serious situation in Baja California. So another important point, you come from the, you are the president of the Citizens Review Board, so to speak, in ba for Baja, but you come from the private uh, sector, from the business sector. Um, is this level of public unsafety affecting the, the, attract, um, the, the, the new arrival of new foreign investment? Well, not really. That's a very important question. I mean, it hasn't affected neither investors or, or visitors. I mean, to the contrary, we have seen that uh, all businesses related to foreigners, uh, Americans especially, uh, they have grown in the past. I mean, houses, apartments, uh, medical services, restaurants, and especially investments. I mean, we have seen an increase, a substantial increase of, uh, of, of more than 30% in the last two, three years. So, so fortunately, as, as, as I was saying a moment ago, uh, this insecurity has affected basically the outskirts of the city and, and, and people involved with uh, some uh, illegal activities. I mean, if they come to Tijuana to visit a family, to go to a restaurant, or to live here since living in California became very expensive, I mean, uh, they have not, so far, they, they have not been really that affected by this insecurity. The immigration is something that is dominating the headlines in the U.S. And tomorrow will be, a, two, two days from today will be an important date with a end of Title 42. Is immigration a, a public safety problem for people in Baja? Well, uh, well, you have to, to, to look into that under two scenarios. We have uh, individuals from, from, from other countries, poor countries, Central America, South America, and some from Africa, okay, immigrating to, to Baja to try to cross the border, but most of them, they stay here since it's very, very difficult to cross the border, okay? And then we have uh, immigration from the states into Mexico, uh, not really people trying to be, do, do business, but uh, individuals trying to reside or to, or to uh, at least have a temporary residency in Mexico. The number of, of foreigners, especially Americans or in Canadian living in Baja is over 50,000, okay? So, so these, these individuals not only represent a, a form of income, but uh, a, a different means of, 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 of cultural uh, behavior. Do you follow me? So uh, it's, we really recommend them to be very safe to have a, a specific contact with the authorities. But we have this, this situation here, people from, coming from Central America and individuals coming from the United States. I mean, that's, that's, that's an imp that's, it has impacted uh, deeply our community. Thank you very much.